Hello YouTube! I've told you about many interesting places in Eurasia and the former Soviet Union. It's time to talk about Azerbaijan. As I mentioned before in my videos, some of the best observers of UFOs, USOs and other paranormal phenomena are trained military and intelligence personnel. Well, there is one that was very well trained former KGB counterintelligence officer, now retired and previously he was working for the third main directorate of the KGB USSR, which was dealing with interior security and counterintelligence in the Soviet army. Now he is an inventor who lives in the Ural Mountains, but at the time he lived in Azerbaijan and he described the flight of the gigantic unidentified object over Azerbaijan and how the Soviet military dealt with it at the time. Now, Soviet pilots who served in the Azerbaijan uh, territorial formations for the KGB intelligence and counterintelligence personally met with the 800 meter large object. It's speed, its velocity was reaching 700 kilometers per hour. This UFO resembled fiery sphere with burning with blue fire. There was no technological uh, characteristics about it. They couldn't find it out. Um, count this, I don't know, Vasily uh, Kuzminik, the uh, former uh, major of the KGB who served for the uh, counterintelligence, those were some of the highestly, highest well trained people, professionals, and he knew what he was talking about. Uh, he, like I said, he is now an inventor and he's working for himself, but he decided to come out and that's good because the more information like that we get, the better it is. Kuzminik mentioned that uh, despite the fact that the um, strange extraterrestrial, according to him, object was v witnessed and observed by many military personnel, the top command of the military unit refused to investigate the incident and take report about the events. And he remembers that his own boss, when he received all the documents from Kuzminik regarding this incident said, well, what kind of resolution am I going to write on your papers? No, I'm going to tear them up. Enough nonsense. Go and look for spies. That was the attitude, unfortunately, of many in the armed forces. And of course the KGB, because the KGB, as I mentioned in my lectures, was not primarily interested in UFOs. They had to receive reports. But they didn't care because they were actually engaged in the defense of military and uh, special scientific facilities. I am sure there were a number of people who cared about it in the KGB. And maybe sometime, someday in the future, we'll get more information than just the 124 pages released in 1991. But I want to talk more about Azerbaijan now. We established about UFOs. I want to bring you now to the May of 2003. This was the time when thousands of people of the Azerbaijan capital, Baku, were looking for over two hours at a UFO from all over the city. The UFO hovered over the city at the height of five to seven kilometers. And it took it such a long time that um, Professor Elchin Halilov, who had it, Commission for the Anomalous Phenomena for the Academy of Sciences of Azerbaijan, he was even able to film the strange object. Of course, our academies of sciences in the West don't have open anomalous commissions. And whatever they have secret, we just don't know about. But those who had observed that UFO said that the, it was a bright spot-like phenomena that was about 9 to 
10 meters in diameter. It actually looked like a giant elongated drop of silvery color. It appeared in the cloudless sky about 5 p.m. This object moved about on a very complicated trajectory and convoluted too. And then at about 18.35 hours the UFO all of a sudden started to depart towards the southern direction and it disappeared in the blue sky. I, I have more about UFOs in Azerbaijan but I just wanted to mention two cases and Azerbaijan should be paid attention to. There are very interesting uh, confirmations of the existence of UFOs there. There are actually photo materials, sometimes just uh, reports from witnesses and uh, it's a very interesting area, like the whole area where the country is located. It's interesting that if you look at the UFO map of Azerbaijan uh, sightings, most often UFOs appeared uh, along the Caspian seaboard and mostly from the water at the distance of 50 to 100 uh, kilometers from the m mainland towards the deepest part of the sea, which is what Caspian Sea is. And now we need to talk about other paranormal phenomena of the Caspian. Uh, I mentioned USOs in, in our book, Russia's USO Secrets, uh, that Philip Mantel and I compiled. Uh, you can find more information, but I want to talk about something that I've always been interested about. The secret underwater beings. Something we don't really know about much. Humanoids. Another race that may be living in the Caspian Sea. I'm going to go through my notes, so excuse simultaneous translations, uh, but I think you will find it very interesting. For example, in July of 2002, there was a young Azerbaijani businessman, Rustam Karimov, who had Greek uh, colleagues and companions on his yacht, which was sailing at the Caspian Sea. This was his second yacht. The first one was in Adriatic, and um, he didn't have time to hire local crew, so he uh, invited his Greek yacht crew to come over. At night the wind died down and the yacht has been stilled. They didn't want to start the diesel engine because it's the owner of the yacht and his friends, they were celebrating his birthday. Uh, the Greeks were celebrating too, but in their own cabin. Now, uh, the cockpit, that's where the uh, um, watch helmsman uh, was standing his uh, watch and uh, he didn't have to steer anything because the yacht was just drifting slowly and um, at the stern there was, uh, I'm, I'm just, I just want to give you the full picture, there was a long cable attached uh, to a dinghy and uh, one of the Greeks, I guess he wanted to smoke on the deck in a special area, he came up, the moon was bright and the Greek sailor saw humanoid silhouettes which were in the rolling dinghy astern. Two people were in it. He wasn't sure what they were doing there so he went to the deck and he and the watchman they put the spotlight, spotlight and um, turned it on to see the uninvited guests. Now they behaved very strangely. They stood up and jumped into the water and disappeared. Now the Greeks were trying to find them, uh, just searching with their spotlight all around the dinghy, but they couldn't find those strange swimmers. So the watchman turned on the siren and the somewhat drunken crew went to the deck. The Greeks were trying to explain something to the captain. He translated into English to the owner of the yacht. They brought the dinghy together and raised it up. They found some strange um, seaweed and also two quite big fish. It looked like the unknown creatures were trying to have a dinner, quiet dinner in the dinghy with fresh fish and the Greek sailors just carried them off. So Rustam told his guests that this was probably 
the Suadam, people of the water or aquatic people, because the legends about Suadam exist among the peoples who inhabit the Caspian Sea shores. Interesting that the Greek captain mentioned that actually in the Adriatic they have stories and reports about something similar. And the Greek captain's father told him that once he and the others uh, fishermen were trying to uh, liberate one of these aquamen who got tangled up in the net. The aquaman was not sure and when he was fighting back he wounded one of the fishermen with something like a short spear with bony arrowhead. And um, such was the first story. But now we gotta go back a little bit. In the beginning of the 1980s during the Soviet times, uh, Caspian oil people often told about their meetings with Suadam. At that time most of the uh, Baku oil was coming from the Caspian um, area and um, the overpasses in the shallow waters they went deep, led deep into the uh, sea and there was a whole town 50 meters from the seashore uh, it was called Niftanie Kamni or oil rocks. It was a whole city uh, 50 meters f of the shore. Like I said, they had platforms with homes, houses, stores, a club, and even uh, gardens. One morning, one of the uh, oil rig workers was coming back to his hostel. Now, he had a few kilometers to walk on the overpass to the uh, Niftanie Kamni town. All of a sudden, up ahead, uh, behind the electrical uh, shield area, he saw a strange human shape sitting on all four. Um, um, uh, the, this man was completely naked. His f shape was blurry and um, unusual, and he was shaking from being cold, and his face was hidden behind the electrical um, uh, shield. The um, oil worker was scared and just for the sake of safety he walked to the other side of the overpass and started moving slowly ahead. When they were about 10 meters apart the strange man did not straighten up and just jumped over the rails and uh, into the water. Now the overpass was about 15 meters tall or high it's uh, almost like uh, you know high-rise building so um, the worker left, ran to the place where the strange creature jumped from but he didn't find anybody in the water half an hour later he got to the settlement he talked about what he had seen and he found out that similar meetings with the unusual creature uh, were reported by other oil rig workers too anyway the Suadam people, the aquamen of Caspian Sea, they are quite uh, fearful of people and don't, don't attack them. But in the past years, that was before 1980s, there were cases of women who had disappeared um, when they tried to walk on the overpass to visit one of the workers. There was an interesting um, case also described about a more in the more recent times about a young couple which um, were sitting uh, on a beach in a moonless night they were busy and they missed the moment when three naked human shapes appeared from the sea what's interesting is they uh, also reported strange blurriness of the creatures the suadams they surrounded this couple and they uh, tried to see what these humans are, they even, you know, try to bend over them and what they were doing and the woman started screaming and yelling loudly so the aquaman immediately disappeared in the water what's interesting is that the man uh, the, 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 the young man who was part of this couple, so to say had to be put into psychiatric asylum and had to be treated for a long, long time but then, at the, in March of 2004, Azerbaijani fishermen from the trawler Baki 
uh, they were in the southern part of the Caspian Sea and they reported the seamen uh, or men of the sea which was swimming alongside with their uh, vessel for a long time so they talked about it in the newspaper Zindagi which was published in the Persian city of Evanzeli and the person who talked about it was the captain of the trawler Gafar Gasanov according to him at first we thought it was a, a large size fish but then we saw that the head of the monster or a strange creature had hair and his four fins were not fins but actually hands and then the Russian news there were Russian newspapers published a number of letters uh, from uh, Persians uh, many people from Iran who claimed that after the uh, activation of the volcanoes in February of 2004 in the area of Bobolsera and more of oil production in the Caspian Sea uh, these fishermen they observed a number of times strange creature which came out from the sea to the shore well the descriptions are somewhat identical and I'll tell you uh, who was one of the most interesting sources of the Suodam descriptions um, they also call this creature in Iran I believe Ruran Shah the height is about 168 centimeters they have their strong build they have protruding tenoid stomachs pointed uh, feet, uh, four webbed fingers on either of hand. Um, now, tenoid means, uh, so you know, you understand, having many tiny projections on the edge, like teeth of a comb, comb or um, in many bony fish. The skin was reported to be of the moonlight color. The hair on the heads of the Suadam or Ruran Shah look black and green. Their arms and legs are shorter and heavier than those of a medium-built person. Now, they have fingernails, but they also have nails growing on the tip of their nose, uh, which look like a dolphin's beak. Um, so, yes, this was described more than once, this strange nose. There are no ears that can be seen. The eyes are uh, round and big. The mouth is big with a protruding lower jaw and it uh, slowly becomes the neck they have no chin um, the Runan Shah was uh, visible in May of 2004 in also fisher, fisher fisherman settlements between the Azerbaijani towns of Astara and Lekoran there are interesting uh, suppositions that this is not just one uh, type of um, a creature but there is a whole family that lives underwater of this unusual humanoids um, again when in 2003 Bobolsero volcanoes became active and the, and, and the oil came up and the Caspian Sea became more dirty in 2004 the Runan Shah started appearing quite more often on more occasions he was observed or it was observed in the sea and um, on the surface we know that Caspian is a very unusual natural phenomenon in itself now it's the largest sea salt um, lake in the world but it, the lake it is it's it's now but there is an opinion that the Caspian used to be the sea before some researchers claim that there is a civilization that exists at the bottom of the sea and that Runan Shah is actually is is representative of this civilization and uh, he was also it was also observed uh, from the area of the uh, city of Chalus in northern Iran to the Azerbaijani Lankaran but also in Turkmenistan in the area of Chelekian one of the best experts about Suadam is Samed Ali Oglu Jafarov a well-known biologist in Moscow who knew in the who worked in the Institute of 
research, biological research at the uh, Russian Academy of Sciences. And he's a zoologist. He's interested in sea animals and mammal and marine biology. Uh, this Azerbaijani scientist, Jafarov, he spent his youth on the shores of Caspian Sea in the town of Lenkarani. Well, one time he recalls that he and his grandfather came out uh, to do night fishing, nighttime fishing, and he was still 15 when he saw something that he described as a mermaid, which was swimming among the fish. And the school was listening to her and would turn to the direction that she or it would point it with. Uh, the creature with head that very much resembled human head. It was swimming among the school of fish and um, Jafarov reminds uh, that uh, to, 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 to the uh, way that the creature was able to subjugate the fish to carry out its commands. He says that the boat he was on with his grandfather uh, was about 10 meters away from the creature. There was the full moon in the sky and he could see everything well. Uh, so Samad, Samad Jafarov screamed in surprise and the creature jumped into the water and never appeared again. He's, uh, and he was uh, reprimanded uh, because uh, his relative told him, what are you screaming? Haven't you heard about this before? Well, he did hear about it before, but it was the first time that uh, Jafarov had observed it. There are many interesting creatures and phenomena at the bottom of our lakes and oceans. And you can find a few videos in my collection. Of course, I will present more because I'm uh, ever collecting information from Eurasia about such stories, but not only Eurasia, Namibia as well. But I'll talk about Namibia again some other times and what has been found in the lakes of that very curious land. And South, Southern Africa in general. I visited it many years ago uh, trying to find out clues to the mysteries described in, in Ivan Yefremov's books. All of this you can find in my videos. And uh, please stay tuned. Please subscribe to my channel and please tell others. Because the more we know about the world and what happens in faraway land and compare it to what happens in our own countries, the more interesting facts will come up and the more developments will be made because of it. Thank you.